In this series, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to strip away all the complexity and hard graft and teach you how to cook amazing food standing on your head. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. From the kitchen novice to the budding chef, I'm going to give you the confidence, the recipes, and the insider knowledge to make you a much better cook. Slice around. Wasting nothing. I've been cooking in professional kitchens for over 25 years. Hey, what cheese is in the macaroni now? I've been taught by some of the best chefs in the world, and in turn, I've taught some of the best. How much whiskey's in there? Yeah, a little bit. Now, I'm going to show you some simple and accessible recipes for fantastic food that you can easily cook at home. Mm. Incredible. I'll be holding you by the hand. It's getting better and better and better. Teaching you everything from how to cook with chili and spice to baking, real fast food, and my ultimate feast recipes. This is the only cookery course you'll ever need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. The frying pan is one of your best friends. It's so versatile in the kitchen. Learning to use it with ease is a must, and I'm going to show you how. First up, my delicious pan-fried pork chops with sweet and sour peppers. Whether it's in the restaurant or even at home, one of my golden rules for producing fantastic food is learning to cook with confidence. This recipe is so straightforward, but tastes absolutely amazing. Pan on. Get that nice and hot. You think of the sort of density of a pork chop, how it needs a little bit of help. Sweet and sour peppers go brilliantly well. First, slice the peppers. That's the flat side of the pepper, so stand it up. Trying to slice a pepper on the side is a nightmare. There's the center. Start off. It's almost like sort of peeling an orange. Go all the way around and down. And look, that's the one. Now, place the pepper down. Three finger rule. One finger in front, two behind. Pinky holding it down, thumb holding it nice and flat. The flatter the vegetables, the more confident you are when you slice. So, don't worry about the speed. Just let the knife do the work and take your time. Speed comes. The most important thing is to get your technique right. Red onion. Now, sweet and sour peppers. Olive oil in. I'm going to saute them, which is just a chef's term for shallow frying on a high heat for maximum taste. Some salt and pepper. Add a tablespoon of sugar. Sugar helps to break down the peppers quicker, but caramelizes the onions. Frying them in a frying pan, perfect. It's one of the sort of basic essential tools of any kitchen because it's so multi-purpose. Great for sauteing, tossing. Great for cooking fish and meat. Push away and pull back. Push away and pull back. That hissing is something you need to hear constantly because the minute that's gone, your peppers and your onions start to boil and you really want them to soak it. You now start to see it glistening in a way that it's starting to caramelize. Sugar's working beautifully. That's ready for the red wine vinegar. In. It smells incredible. It helps to stain the peppers as well. Look at the glaze now. You can see the sugar worked as magic. Turn down the gas and add a couple of tablespoons of fresh extra virgin olive oil. Let them stew for two to three minutes. Now, I want to make the peppers nice and light and sort of sweet, aromatic. Just roll the basil, almost like a big cigar. Slice. Basil in, and then literally cook it out for 30 seconds. I want them off. Beautiful. OK, pan back on. And now for the pork chops. I want to make sure they don't curl up in the pan. If they start curling up in the pan, they're going to cook unevenly. A few simple cuts through the rind means the chop stays flat and cooks evenly. Point the knife down. Flip through. Just season them beautifully. Nice large shards of pepper. Punch that through lightly. Guarantee that seasoning. It's going to stay there. Hot pan, touch garlic and a touch of thyme. And the garlic, take a couple of cloves. Don't peel it, don't chop it, just knife on. Crush it. 
olive oil in. Just starting to smoke. Top of the chop, in. And lay away from me. Nice. Keep that heat in the pan. Put the garlic in there early. A nice fragrant bunch of thyme. See how the pork has stayed nice and flat. Turn that over. Look at that. Beautiful. I want a little bit of thyme underneath there. Start squeezing that garlic out. I want the flavour coming out. Butter in. Thin slices of butter. Tilt the pan and baste. So I'm sort of speeding up the cooking process. At the same time, I'm keeping the pork chop really nice and moist. And now look at the colour of that butter. It's almost like sort of a nut brown. Check the colour on the other side. Beautiful. When they're that thick, three and a half to four minutes each side. 30 seconds from now, they're going to be medium, so I'm going to take them out and let them rest. The secret to perfectly moist pork chops is letting them rest almost as long as they're cooked in the pan. A nice spoon of these peppers. The basil smells incredible. Keep that garlic on there. Be generous with that vinaigrette for the peppers because it really is incredible. Do two things simple like that, pork and peppers and your confidence is going to shoot through the roof. A stunning pork chop with sweet and sour peppers. The frying pan is so simple, but incredibly useful. With this one pan, you can make a million different dishes. The more you cook with your frying pan, the more your confidence will grow. Here are three of my favourite easy pan-fried dishes. First up, pan-fried scallops with crunchy apple salad. Get a frying pan smoking hot, essential for quick pan frying. Add olive oil, then season scallops with salt and pepper. Starting at the top, put clockwise into the pan so you know which one to turn first. Scallops have firm white sweet flesh and cook in minutes. Next, salad, lamb's lettuce. Matchsticks of apple. Seasoning. Lemon, zest and juice. Add olive oil, then toss. Turn the scallops when golden, going clockwise around the pan. Then squeeze in lemon juice and give the pan a shake. Finish with lemon zest. Ready in under 10 minutes. My first pan-fried dish, scallops with crunchy apple salad. My next super simple pan-fried recipe is chicken and chicory in masala sauce. Season the chicken breast. Add to hot olive oil, skin side down, Lay away from you to stop the oil splashing. Sliced chicory. This versatile vegetable can be red or white. Has a lovely bitter taste and is great cooked or raw. Crush a clove of garlic and add. Then sprigs of thyme. When the chicken skin is crisp, turn over. Along with the chicory. For the sauce, add masala, a sweet fortified wine from Sicily. Then 150 ml of chicken stock. To make the sauce wonderfully rich and glossy, add butter and simmer for 10 minutes. Plate up and spoon over the sauce. Cooked in under 20 minutes, chicken and chicory in masala sauce. My final dish cooked in the versatile frying pan is sea bream with tomato and herb salsa. Fry fillets of sea bream skin side down in hot olive oil. If they buckle up, press gently down for perfect even cooking, then season. Sea bream has firm white flesh, perfect for pan frying. Next, the salsa. Heat olive oil, 
Add halved cherry tomatoes, pitted black olives, and season. After a minute, on a low heat, add coriander, basil, and lemon. Combine and leave to infuse. As the sea bream cooks, it goes opaque. When it's two thirds from the top, turn over. Baste, fry, and it's done. Sea bream with tomato and herb salsa, ready in under 15 minutes. One pan, three simple, impressive, and absolutely delicious dishes. Beautiful. Coming up on my ultimate cookery course, along with 100 recipes to stake your life on, I'm going to give you 100 quick cooking tips to make your life in the kitchen easier. First up, how to keep your knife sharp. It's far harder working in the kitchen with a blunt knife than it is with a sharp knife. The secret behind keeping a sharp knife, sharpen it before and every time you use it. First, grip the steel. Feel really comfortable about holding the steel. Imagine you're holding a tennis racket or you're playing squash. You've got to be really comfortable with it. Now, 45 degrees, confident grip, confident grip with the knife. This is the butt of the steel. Really important you keep your fingers behind there. You never grip a steel with your fingers over that, because the knife comes back in, you've just lost a finger. Always grip behind. Nice long strokes so we get the whole of the blade over the steel. Stroke. And we start from the bottom to the top. So there, across, there, across. Slow strokes over the top of the steel. And then come back underneath. Then back underneath. It is so dangerous working in the kitchen with a blunt knife. You can cause so much damage. Working with a sharp knife is 10 times quicker, more efficient. Now, that's ready to start chopping. Stop your chopping board rocking or slipping. A great tip is to simply wet a kitchen cloth, kitchen paper, or tea towel and place it underneath. Now you can chop with confidence. My next top tip is get the most out of your humble veg peeler. It's brilliant for slicing ultra thin ribbons of veg, perfect for Asian dishes. Great for making long, delicate parmesan shavings to top soups and salads. It also makes wonderful chocolate curls. Your pepper mill is more versatile than you might think. Tighten the top screw to get finely ground pepper, ideal for soups and sauces. For general seasoning, you want it medium ground, so set the screw in the middle. And loosen it right off for coarse pepper, perfect for steaks and fish. Peeling garlic. For one clove, simply bash it with the back of a knife and the skin comes off easily. For a whole head, Crush, separate into a bowl. Cover and shake hard for about 10 seconds. Then simply pick out the peeled cloves. This is my ultimate cookery course. 100 recipes to stake your life on. I'll be showing you a roast chicken recipe to die for. Hold the drum and slice straight through. But first, like any good chef, I'm always looking to get great ingredients at the right price. My shopping mantra is simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying, it looks, smells, and really feels good. And if you get the chance, taste it before you buy it. Second, is to recognize that knowledge is crucial. The more you know about where your ingredients come from and how they're produced, the better. So, ask lots of questions and learn. You're never too old to learn from experts. And when it comes to buying great birds, one person knows what to look for is award-winning fifth-generation master butcher, Danny Lidgate. Poultry is a great meat because there's many different types of birds it's worth tasting. The variation of flavors between different birds to birds is massive. Turkey's a great lean meat that's available all year round, not just for Christmas. Anybody who's worried about eating fatty meats, it's a really healthy, flavorsome meal. Okay, yep. Game birds. People don't try them often enough. Once they're shot, they're hung up for a little while, a few days at least. It means the meat's going to be more tender. It all adds its flavour to the bird. We've got a wood pigeon and a red leg partridge. Both really good and cook really quickly. 
when you're buying a chicken, some of the things to look out for is obviously the smell. And when you're smelling a good quality chicken, you can tell the difference. The skin's a nice white colour and it smells like a fresh chickeny smell. When you're buying from a good butcher, you'll find you tend to get the giblets as well, which is basically the neck and other organs. This is great for making gravy. Once you have cooked it, you can use all the offcuts for other things, stir fries, curries, pasta dishes, save the bones, use the bones for stocks and soups, they're really packed full of flavour. And remember, there are lots of different breeds of chicken, all have different characteristics and flavours. So, shop around and find the ones you love. Here are three of my all-time favourites. The label Anglais. These come from an old British breed. They've got smaller breasts, but the meat's delicious. The Black Leg, a fantastic French variety, succulent with bags of flavour and really meaty thighs. And the Poulet de Bresse. This is the Rolls Royce of chickens, rich, gamey and delicious, one for special occasions. I think people should maybe try and buy less meat but aim for the best quality. You're only going to get out what you put in. By putting the best quality into a dish, you're going to get the best results. No matter how seasoned a chef you are, there are always new ingredients and recipes to get fired up about. So, if a tired old recipe is getting you down, spice it up with fresh ideas and flavours. My next recipe is an old classic roast chicken, but with a simple twist, it takes on a new life and is guaranteed to impress. One of the things I love about cooking, and that keeps me excited after 25 years behind the stove, is that there's always something new to learn every day. New ingredients, new techniques, and new cuisines. Start off with the stuffing. It's amazing how exciting a stuffed roast chicken can be because it keeps the chicken incredibly moist and gives a delicious texture inside the bird. We're gonna start off with cured cerezo. This is a traditional Spanish sausage and it's garlicky, spicy, incredibly meaty. That gives a little bit of sort of richness to the stuffing. Get that cerezo in. Start cooking that down and getting all those oils out. A little touch of olive oil in there to get it going. Right, onions. Chopped. Add the onions to the cerezo, and in a matter of seconds, they'll change colour as they soak up all the flavour. That lovely spiciness has been stolen from that sausage, and now the onions smell incredible. Garlic. Garlic in. Fresh thyme. Just hold it down and Get your fingers on there. And it's a really nice way of taking off all those nice, fragrant little thyme flowers. You can hear it crackling in the background. These are cannellini beans. They're waxy, very soft, and so delicious, but very dense. But for stuffing, they're so robust, nothing breaks down. Drain them off. In. They're going to take on all that juice as well from the freezer. I'm going to season them now because they're very dense, so it needs some help. I mean, that looks like it's a dish on its own. Good enough to eat now. I want to sweeten things up a little bit. Tomatoes, half dried. In. That sweetens up the stuffing. Beautiful. The stuffing's ready. Look at the colour of everything. It looks Spanish. It looks delicious. Now, stuffing the chicken. I like taking off these little knuckles. As the chicken cooks, the skin stretches over the bone. You can get a really nice drum. And take off those little wing tips as well. Salt, pepper. So important. Now, with your stuffing, I want to go right inside the chicken. Push it down. This really helps to cook the bird evenly because you're pushing out all the empty spaces in the carcass. And take a nice, large lemon. Push the lemon in, pick up the parson's nose, pull the skin over. Olive oil on top, salt and pepper, a teaspoon of paprika, sprinkle it on, and then get your hands and sort of rub that in. You can see what the paprika's doing to the chicken. It's putting this, like, sweet, spicy marinade. It's not even roasted yet, but it looks delicious. 
400 ml of white wine. Same quantity of water. That helps the chicken to steam. Chicken in. Be generous with the thyme sprigs. Make sure the foil is folded tightly around the roasting tray so the chicken steams in the oven, keeping it moist and juicy. Into the oven. Cook for one hour at 180 degrees with the foil on. Nice. Take it out and remove the foil lid. Then give it another 30 minutes to crisp up that skin. Look at that. It's so important to make sure you take that tin foil off with half an hour to go. Beautiful. Pierce that open, squeeze it in that delicious gravy. Mix that into the tray. And sip that. That's a really nice, fragrant, lemony, spiced, roasting juices to finish. Before we cut up the chicken, take out that amazing stuffing. Mmm. Incredible. I'd have that with chicken over potatoes any day. And then just get your chicken roasting juices. Now, to cut the chicken up, hold the drum and slice straight through. And there's that wonderful drum and the thigh. Through the wishbone, off. Slice with the point at an angle so you can see the texture of that amazing roast chicken. Just take my cooking juices. Just want to give a really nice sort of lemony flavour over my chicken. And there you go. A delicious, very charming, stuffed roast chicken. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and a hundred recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.